Welcome to this special Saturday night edition of The Standard. From Vancouver, I'm Randall Mark. Tonight, an exclusive look at one of the world's greatest mystical faiths, Sufism. Sufism is a mystical tradition within Islam with connections reaching back to the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Around 1,000 of the common era Sufi literature began to appear and ever since the faith has been growing in strength and numbers. Omni Television will be airing a new program at 9 p.m. on Sunday nights called Sufism, Essence of Islam. Fahram Hadari is the host of the show and joins me now. Welcome to the show. Hello. Sufism is, uh, is, is something that not many people know about. When we hear about Islam a lot, we don't hear a lot about the Sufi faith. What are some of the key distinctives to that faith? Well, uh, we believe that Islam means uh, submission. Uh, submission means you submit your will to the will of God. Now, the heart of submission is Sufism. That means it's a volunteer relationship with God that comes out of love. So we don't say God or Allah so much, we say beloved. Mm. So this is a trinity of love, beloved, and the lover. So Sufi is uh, in love with God and pursuing the beloved. Mm. And the beloved, for this you need passion, as you understand. It comes with volunteer, love relationship with passion. And this is what Sufism is, uh, unconditional love for God. Now. Uh, of course, we don't see God. So how do we express our love to God or Allah or the beloved is by serving the society and every other human being. So in Sufism, there is no just Muslim. There's every creature of God, every uh, nation, every culture, every people is a reflection and expression of God. So by servicing those people, you can call yourself a Sufi. Mm. Now, <clears throat> now. From my, my understanding, part of the Sufi philosophy or, or a way uh, they often talk about as a way of living is that you interpret the Quran without the help of a, a mullah or a cleric, which sometimes uh, seems to get uh, some controversy from some more fundamentalistic uh, uh, Islamic people. Exactly. Uh, when you, we, we understand that Holy Quran, uh, Holy Bible, and Holy Torah, these are the lesan means these are the hidden language. Now for hidden language? Hidden language. Okay. Now, the hidden language only reveals itself to you if you go to it with clean heart and you go with ablution. You go with a clean temptation. Uh, so therefore, it reveals itself. So we, okay. you can say Bible was revealed to Jesus and Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Uh, they only understand the essence of it. For us, who we read it with, for example, with the uh, hatred or anger or judgment, we will not receive that message. So you must go in it with clean intention. So, are you, so you're, you're, you seem to be saying that there's more to than just reading the Quran or reading the Bible. There's something that the, the person who's reading it must bring to the table yes. in order to gain the understanding yes. of the text. For example, this cup of water, if there is water in it, you cannot put anything in it. So you have to empty it, get rid of the dirt or that dirty water was in it in order to pour clean water in it. So you must go with clean. Okay, you talk about clean. That means, do you have? A, is there a notion of sin or evil in in Sufism? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, for, for, let me give you a story. Okay. A deer in the field sees a lion, and he goes, "Oh God, please me, save me, save me from this creature." And the uh, the lion is like, "Oh, thank God for such a beautiful meal." So <laughs> we live in this duality. The question of sin is not as it understood in the conventional way. Uh, sin means killing your potential. Uh, okay, if somebody, that's, that's why, uh, for example, suicide is forbidden because you kill a potential that could be in service of people. For example, if Einstein, ha Einstein had killed himself, we would not be enjoying those uh, service that he gives to us, right? So if you kill somebody's potential, your children, anybody, by killing anybody, or destroying the potential, you are committing sin. So, so martyrdom then for Sufism is is a, a very very different understanding than some extreme forms of Islam have interpreted it to be. Well, I mean, even in Islam itself. I mean, forget about the mullahs and that group of people. Um, we don't have martyrdom. You have shahadat. Shahadat means witnessing, okay. being in a presence of God. Now, you can achieve that status by being good and giving service to humanity through peaceful. Uh, behavior and peaceful deed. When you make that, then you'll be in the presence of God. So in Islam, we believe we don't have martyrdom. 
you have shahadat and only happens because there is no outside, according to Quran, there is no outside enemy. The enemy is within you. Hmm. So you must combat those, they call it nafs. So uh, why is it that, that so many uh, people interpret the Quran in ways that externalize the evil. The evil's out there, we must get rid of it, we must, you know, get rid of the, the infidel and, you know, blow up things and blow up people. Well, and yet you're yeah. saying, no, we can read the Quran in a very different way. Sure, I mean, uh, you know, the fact is they have political agenda, uh, they ignorant. Uh, Prophet Muhammad said, you will do to my religion as previous people did to Jesus' religion, mm -hmm. okay? So you inherit something good and you will ruin it. You interpret it the way you want. Of so you're saying many people have ruined Islam by their interpretation. Well, I mean, you cannot ruin Islam, but you, you, they, you know, you can because the essence, the heart is beautiful. It's about peace, it's about reconciliation, it's about developing your own potential, it's about finding that uh, ignorance within you. You have to find what are those ignorance. The ignorance is uh, greed, is uh, judgment, is vanity, is jealousy, is you know, hatred, and all that. If you Get rid of that hatred, mm -hmm. then you'll be renewed. So Prophet Muhammad says what? In order to know God, you must know yourself. And nobody knows you better than yourself. Who you are, okay, you are you're ignorant, you are your judgment, you know, because we brought mm -hmm. up in a society that is limited, limited education. So we create a reality for your, ourselves. That reality we, call, we create for ourselves is not the absolute or infinite reality. Mm -hmm. So therefore, our relationship with reality is a relative. Now, Prophet Muhammad says, look, what you're creating is not, you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping yourself. You create a God, and you in your worship own image, in, your, in your own image. Right. And then you start worshiping that God, and you keep judging. Okay, I'm a nice guy, maybe God help me. He's a bad guy, let's, mm. God maybe destroy him. Now, Prophet Muhammad says, pick up this ax and destroy that idol, mm. because you're worshiping yourself, because you're worshiping something limited. Mm. The God and existence is infinite. By that, you're opening the way to the infinite uh, and absolute. So when you talk about marfat or Sufi knowledge or Quranic knowledge, you're talking about that undifferentiated and absolute knowledge. Let's, let's pick up on this conversation right after the break. More with Bahram Hadari right after this break. I'm back with Bahram Adari, the host of Sufism, Essence of Islam, a new program set to begin airing on Sunday nights on Omni Television at 9 p.m. Bahram, we were talking about Sufism. Now, there's a, under, in the, my understanding of Sufism is some, some forms of it have um, a mystical element that they do these dances, these whirling dervishes. Tell me a little bit about what these are. They're, they're quite beautiful in their display. Yeah. Well, I mean, we understand that the whole creation is, is, sub, is submitted to the will of Allah. Or beloved, so everything is turning. Everything is turning. You look at every stars, every planet. The whole thing is, is in uh, under decree or order, and they're doing the beautiful job. Now, the Sufi dance means you actually turn in the same direction as the whole universe is dancing. Sama is the name means hearing, hearing that beautiful divine music that is played. So there's music being played. Well, the music that comes from the divine, yeah, okay. from there. That is, you put yourself in harmony with all the nature and uh, the whole creation and dance with it. Put one hand on your right, on your heart, okay, and one hand up. So you look, your heart means something that is turning because we live on earth, therefore we have material need. So the heart to, uh, beats sometimes toward our material time, sometimes, sometimes toward the uh, divine. Mm -hmm. So it's dancing and bringing yourself into harmony and through that you do your prayers and you work toward to, to the outside observer, that would uh, you'd all, all, it, there's a beautiful element to it. All these 
people in these robes and spinning and, the, and these dancing is going on. So the out, outside observer, often it looks like they're almost in a trance. Is that true? Do exactly. They, they, a trance comes on them? Exactly. I mean, Sufis do many things. Uh, as we said earlier, we said Sufi is in the heart, yeah? It's the passion, passion mm -hmm. of Islam. Now, the only way you could express that passion, that love toward beloved, is through music, art, mm -hmm. uh, dancing, uh, true art, uh, architecture, yeah, art, 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 art seems to be very important. Very, Sufism. very important. Therefore, the Sufis are dancing and hearing that. Now, what happens here, you, you may see Sufis that do extraordinary miracles and stuff like that, yeah? yeah. Now, this comes to the concept that uh, in Quran it calls Khalq jadid or new creation, uh, perpetual creation. That means, according to Quran, everything is uh, dying and re uh, renewing itself at all time. Mm -hmm. So you and I sitting here, we're not the same as we were the moment ago. Mm -hmm. So this uh, process of renewation happening all the mm -hmm. time. And so therefore, uh, everybody is uh, renewing itself. This, what the Sufis do, they say at that time, that something gets in interrupted. Before it gets renewed, you, you can change the direction of that thing. Mm -hmm. So it works on perception. For example, you know, many people, they. Uh, ask other people to change their religion or mm -hmm. join their group or so, happens because you change somebody's per perception. Now, we believe people of God, people of divine, uh, mystical, mystic people, Jesus and mm, uh, Moses and Prophet Muhammad, what their effect was at the time they could see, they look at something that is uh, withering, at that time they could change it and bring it back to life. Do, does, so a, does, does a Sufi, do, is it, or do they, in a sense, evangelize? Is there a sense of trying to change other people's perspective to be, make them become a Sufi? No. Like, should I become Sufi? No. First of all, uh, in, even in Islamic, an Islamic Sufi, you cannot ask, ask people to change their religion hmm. because everybody has to experience God through their own uh, ontological way. For example, you cannot, if I experience God, I cannot come and tell you what God is like, yeah? Uh, so you cannot ask people... It's deeply people, personal, then. It's, it's very it's, personal. It's about you and the creation. And it's you about must, your interpretation of the Quran, too. Exactly. About understanding of that. So you have to experience God. You have to experience God. And that experience is all valuable to you. Uh, and, of course, your service, your uh, duty is to help other people and give your service, despite what the religion, what their faith, what, the, what they're thinking are. There is a story that Sufis always talk about, Rumi talks about it, that... Prophet Abraham invited a man to his house, and he was feeding him. Then he realized the guy was an unbeliever. He kicked him out of his house. Now, God says, why did you kick him out? He says, well, because he was an unbeliever. And God says, I knew he was an unbeliever before, before he was born. I never cut his bread. How did you decide? So the Sufis is about this. You must give your service. You must give regardless your... Of, regardless of... Regardless of... Talk and, to me about, and not change people. Right. Uh, people have to do that themselves through you know, perception. They have to experience God. Uh, many people think about Islam and they think about uh, the, the, the disparaging uh, difference between males and females and the role of women in Islam. Uh, women are being veiled, the, the, uh, wearing um, clothing that is, you know, trying to seal them up at, what, at some level. How does the Sufi understand the role of women? Well, I mean, uh, according to Quran itself, women are, have the highest place. They are the most beautiful reflection of God himself. And Prophet Muhammad come to an area which was totally barbaric, uh, at that time, so uh, that uh, part of the world was totally barbaric. They used to kill women because men were getting killed in war. They had too many women and too many mouth to feed. Therefore, they used to bury them. So Prophet Muhammad, the first thing he did, he brought, uh, he stopped killing off the women. He freed women by uh, bringing, it was, uh, Islam was the first religion or first uh, culture that brought the right to divorce for women. I mean, we're talking about 1100. 1400 years ago, right to divorce, right to inheritance. And many women became referee in the markets. Many women stood on the member and talked. So during Prophet Muhammad, women were free. So, so how it, come that's not going on now? Well, because these well. men are, you know, men are sexist. Men yeah. are sexist and, and interpret things the mm. way they want. Mm. Now, if I may, so, you know, all days when we used to go to the school of Sufis, they used to put this lamp. And they put a box around it with lots of holes. Now, when these lights, you turn the lights on, lots of lights come out of that. Mm. Now, they used to tell us, Allahu Nur Samawat, as the Quran says, God is the light between heaven, heavens. Now, that light is God. All this light reflects, comes out of these holes, is us. Mm. But we all separate. We don't know our source is one. And therefore, as we get further, we're seeking identity for ourselves. Mm. And that seeking identity, we start hatred and 
we find the difference between genders and black and white and this and that. You know, you start hatred toward other cultures. And now they say, look, when you go back to your source, the source is one. You all came from one. Unity of being. La ilaha illallah. When you hear, that means nothing exists but God. Everything is the reflection of God and everything will return to God. Mm -hmm. So in this world, when you come, don't try to look for those differences. Try to find what your essence is. Mm -hmm. Once you, that's why our program called, sometimes we call it Sufi, the essence of Islam, sometimes the heart of Islam. Because I, I the essence is show, the same. Because yeah. the show's coming up and I want to have a little chance sure. to discuss it right after this break. One final segment with Bahram Adari right after this break. Production assistance for The Standard is presented in part by the Metropolitan Hotel, ultra-luxurious and conveniently located in downtown Vancouver. I'm back for one final segment with Bahram Adari, the host of Sufism, Essence of Islam. You were telling me that uh, you came out of Iran in the late 70s. Iran is a hotbed of, of political activity right now and, and its understanding of its growing uh, autonomy at one level and, and it's kind of flexing its muscles. What do you think, I mean, as a person who has obviously grew up there, what do you think the response should be of the West to the, the desire to arm themselves nuclear? I think the West uh, should go the way of peace and reconciliation, bring it onto the negotiation table, and by doing so, uh, persuade them to go a uh, right direction because we have a great democracy in Western world. I'm happy to live in Canada, such a beautiful country. I always tell my friend, uh, my friends, that Canada is a Urshalim or is a holy land because here people can develop their potential. We all live together from different cultures, so we could. Those countries, uh, such as Iran and other countries, they can learn a lot from. Uh, democracy that we have in West. But, I mean, what yeah. do you do with a, a you know prime minister, a president who says, "I want to wipe you know Israel off the face of the map"? How do you how do you reconcile peace with a, with someone who's that adamant? Well, I mean, from Sufi point of view, the, you know, you, you, we're not at war. Me, I mean, Sufis mm -hmm. are not at war with anybody, and you can only project peace. And I think it's the duty of every Muslim to be peaceful. Uh, to value Western world and uh, Northern America, to have respect for the chance that they have given to us to live here. So I think uh, Islam understand, reaches, salam means peace. You reach with your right hand to shake hand, somebody's hand. I think Islam is about this, and every Muslim, whether it is the president of Iran or whoever, they must, they must go the route of peace. But why, and, why such animosity? What do you think that's about? I, you know, I, I really... I'm not politics, I don't understand politics because, and we, as Sufis, we, we, we will not get involved in politics. We pull out a little we bit. We pull out because we condemn every violence, every act of uh, killing or so. As Holy Quran says, if somebody innocent is killed, it's like the whole creation is killed. So for example, if you kill somebody in Canada, they try you for 1%. If you kill somebody in Islamic thinking, it's like they try you for the killing of the whole humanity. So I don't know, the, hope, hopefully we should pray that the leaders of the world find a way toward peace I mean, and you're, reconciliation. You're talking about peace and it sounds like, wow, that would be a wonderful thing. And yet, how pervasive is Sufism in, in, in uh, the Islam? How many, what are the numbers? How many well, people are? Sufis are Sufis? very small numbers. How many? Uh, because we, I don't know, there's uh, seven, eight different orders in Iran. There's many, many in Canada we have mm -hmm. at the moment as well. Uh, 
uh, Sufi, we're not there to persuade people to join us. We're not there to uh, sort of uh, giving money to each other is haram, taking money from somebody. Sufism is about the way of God, about serving the society. Doesn't matter what job you do, like your job or mine, whatever. Do it the best and get rid of your own greed, get rid of your own vanity. But, but, but even if you're getting rid of <clears throat> anger, don't you need to, don't, doesn't Sufism at least say, here's some things we stand against. We stand against violence and we hatred. Stand, yes. So we, in one sense, you are politically involved in that by standing against something. Well, I mean, for example, we, you know, you have to have, you know, you can't say I'm standing for uh, duality is not for Sufis, yeah? We believe that there's one God, everything that happens is from him. It's our perception and our view that we see something as good and bad. So for us, is to ascend duality, as Prophet Muhammad did, as Rumi did, is ascending duality and understand everything that is evolving and going toward Okay, so ascend peace. duality, it's a little confusing because I, I, what I hear is you saying is, I really value the ideas of peace and, and of finding interconnections between faiths. Well, because do we understand peace? Every year, men in suit, tie, mm -hmm. educated, they sit around the table, they talk about peace, and every year we have more violence, more wars. So, because everybody talk on their own term of peace. There is a universal peace that we don't understand. Sufism is about this. Universally, what is the meaning of peace? What is the meaning of hungry? What's the meaning of service? Not what my conception is, not because my conception is very limited to my own experience and my own background. Uh, therefore, I'll be very judgmental. So through practicing prayers and uh, hopefully be good to one another, you can raise above, I mean, above it, that. Do you think that uh, there's an obligation to stand uh, against certain activities? Would a Sufi, let's say like yourself, say, I have an obligation to help out where there is need, to stand against oppression if I see oppression? Well, I mean, I don't know if I uh, stand against oppression, not in a violent way. I stand okay. against oppression by uh, civil disobedience, maybe maybe by even stay, uh, stay silence, you can do that, yeah? Mm -hmm. But not by means of violence, because you cannot harm another creature. Anytime you harm somebody, you're harming the whole universe. The whole world has to obviously come to some understanding that we all came from one source by hurting another, even the one who hurts is already getting hurt. What if you understand, when Moses was knocking on uh, people's door and inviting them to uh, get rid of slavery and everything, mm -hmm. at the same time he was knocking on uh, Pharaoh's door and he was inviting them to inviting him to God too. Mm -hmm. So this invitation is for everybody, not you know, not for just oppressor or oppressed. Yeah. You, you have you have, <coughs> we have one minute left. What are some connections? You talked about uh, connections between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. What are you finding uh, as far as in your experience? What are the deep connections that you have in common there? I see myself as a Christian, I see myself as a Jewish, and I see myself as a Muslim. Mm. So uh, the, the law of Moses, uh, that means uh, everything has to work on the basis of truth and no deception, uh, the grace of Jesus, and the knowledge and the uh, marfat that Prophet Muhammad brought. So these three is the way of Sufi, and it's about I'm not, you know, we're talking about be on the way to the word of God. So Jesus said, if you had faith, you could do what I do. Mm -hmm. So by me, by saying that if you had experienced God the way I did, you could do what mm -hmm. I do. So hopefully we are all on the same wow. direction. Thanks so much for joining us today. There's uh, so much I need to know yet, but I appreciate your coming on the show. Thank you. You're right, great. You can watch Mr. Hadari's program, Sufism, Essence of Islam, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. on Omni Television. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the show. If you have a question or comment about tonight's program, or if you have a topic idea for us, we'd love to hear from you. Our email address is the standard at omnibc.ca, or call our comment line at 604 575 4125. That's all the time we have for tonight's show. For everyone at the standard, I'm Randall Mark.